second Adam to cover his bride. Okay, but I want to get ahead of myself a little bit here. Baruch Hashem Okay, so nakedness is a sign of what? Being open to temptation. In the very next chapter, in Bereshus chapter 3, what happens? Boom. Adam's not covering Eve. Eve is isolated. Eve is left alone. And what happens? Satan gets Eve right into the original transgression. Right? And so now they're naked and now they were they were never ashamed of their nakedness, but by violating Torah, are you with me? Listen, by violating, how many Torahs did Yahweh have in Gan Eden? One. Excuse me? One. Correct. And what was the Torah? Out of all the eight seen you can eat, but out of one eighth you shall not eat. It is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil means syncretism, mixed religious syncretism, truth and error. You'll never, I was speaking to a sister last night about the house of Yahweh in Texas. You see how diplomatic I am. And she said, you know, there's a lot of truth there. I said, yeah, there's a lot of error. So Satan is too smart to give you just error. He will take the error embedded within the truth. Uh, are you with me? True, he mixes. And, and so there was one Torah, and Yahweh said, this is your Torah. If you don't eat of this tree, you'll live forever. You'll have life with me. You'll walk with me in the cool of the day. Are you with me? Who were they walking with in the cool of the day? The Messiah. Because no man has ever seen the Father. No man has ever seen the Father. No man can see the Father. The Ainsoth. The eternal, Im immutable Ainsoth. And so, so the one that was walking in the cool of the day was the Messiah. And when they violated the Torah, they violated the Torah of the Messiah. They were both naked and innocent. When they fell into transgression, they were, their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked. Nakedness is the sign of an unfaithful woman. Or man, for that matter. Nakedness is a sign of unfaithfulness. Is any of this making sense? Yes. I'm just getting started, so just dig in. All right? We'll be here a long time. Because I come to deliver some, some, some beef. I get tired of all my congregation saying, where's the beef? I said, I come every Shabbat and deliver the beef. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. But it takes time to deliver the beef. Amen. So nakedness is the sense of shame and disobedience to Torah. Who walked with Adam and Eve? Who brought the two together? Mashiach. The, who, who had manifested to them in the Ruach, but we know no, the Father never appeared to anybody. Hello? Because if they were, if the Father was in the Garden of Eden, what would have happened to Adam and Eve? They would have been like a bag of M&Ms left out in the sun. So it was Moshiach who brought them together. And he goes, I'm watching, but now you've sinned against me, and now you're ashamed of your nakedness. Who told you you were naked? It wasn't me. Who told you? Who gave you this awareness that you were naked? Are you with me? Right. Now remember, we're talking about two Torahs that must be fulfilled, or else Yahweh is celibate, spiritually celibate. And his bride has gone whoring, and he's impotent. He can't reclaim his bride, or he trades in his eternal bride that he told us was eternal for a new covenant bride, something called the church, based in Rome, fathered by Constantine rather than Yahweh. So we have no choice here, brothers and sisters. Yahweh has got to find a way to fulfill the Torah of jealousy and adulterous woman, which Israel broke. What happens when Adam, when Adam and Eve sinned? Not, what was in that tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The Torah of jealousy. The one who was walking with them said, What happened, Adam? Where are you? What happened? I wasn't good enough for you. I didn't love you enough. I wasn't with you enough. What happened? So he, immediately Moshiach became jealous. Turn your name and say, Moshiach became jealous. Yes. And the second thing is, Adam and Eve being one flesh, had become an adulterous woman. And I hate to tell you this, ladies, I love women, I'll tell you. I, I gotta confess. All right, the word says confess your faults one to another. <laughs> I love women. But I've gotta be frank with you. They're not, when, when the Bible speaks of women, it's not very often complimentary. Not in the terms of Yahweh's born again children. 
in terms of pictures, types of religion, types of religious systems. Are you with me? Yes. It's not always a very complimentary metaphor or allegory when Yahweh uses women. He loves women. Don't misquote me now. Don't go home. Some of you don't, don't understand my humor. You're going to go home and say that, that, that the Bible doesn't like women. I didn't say that. Turn to your neighbor and say, he does not say that. I said, women is a metaphor and allegory that does not always use in a favorable fashion by Elohim Yahweh. This is deep stuff, brothers and sisters. So, Moshiach was hurt in the garden. The fact is, and, and, by the, and by the way, when we talk to our traditional Jewish friends, even our Christian friends, who, are, who we, we get them out of that system and turn them into Ephraimites, which they are anyway, Yeshua's done it, but he uses us as vessels, amen? How many times have you been taught that gold gave the Torah? Gold! What gold? Toad, gold, road? What gold? The one that crashes into buildings, the one that sits under a tree and passes gas. Which gold are we talking about? You better start using Yahweh because these are the last days. And you better identify the one that loves you and keeps you and protects you. Are you with me? Where was that? So we've always been taught coming out of that system, and believe me, even a nice Jewish boy like me has come out of that system, that God the Father gave the law. No, I want to show you today that the Messiah married Adam and Eve. I want to show you today that the Messiah gave the Torah, because this is paramount to showing that when Israel became an unfaithful wife, an unfaithful bride, she did not sin against the Father, she sinned against the Messiah who married her at Mount Sinai. I'm going to show you today, clearly in Scripture, turn to your neighbors and say, clearly in Scripture, clearly. that it was the Messiah who gave the Torah, not the Father. The Father did not leave heaven, evacuate heaven, or allow his self to be seen. It was Yeshua, the one who married Adam and Eve, the one, the, the, that couple ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they became unfaithful. Are you with me? And, and then Yeshua, Yeshua said, okay, now I'm going, my first bride, the one I was most intimate with, what happened to him? He, he let his messianic standing in heaven get to his head. And he uncovered himself before me. Are you with me? The second bride, Adam and Eve, everything was fine. Everything, I was walking with them in the cool of the day. They also violated Torah. I gave them one Torah. They couldn't even keep one Torah. <laughs> I, now Mashiach is getting jealous. When he cried over Yerushalayim, he says, Oh, Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, you who stole the prophets and, and kills those who are sent to you, I would gathered you as a hen gathers a brood, but you would not come. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Amen? That was the jealousy of the Moshiach over his people Israel. Remember, he always has one bride. I beg you, I plead with you, I encourage you, I admonish you. Take out of your head and out of your heart the old tapes that the church is the bride of Christ. The, when you start teaching and believing that the church is something, I don't know what the church is, apart from Israel, but when you start teaching that, what that is is dispensationalism, meaning the Father has changed his brides. If the Father changes his brides, then Malachi 3, 6 is a lie. I am Yahweh, I change not. The sons of Jacob are never consumed before me. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 8, Yeshua HaMoshiach is the same yesterday, today, and even forever. The bride is the same. You know, Yahweh's covenant faithfulness is at stake. His Amen. reputation is at stake. His loyalty is at stake. His legitimacy is at stake. If that, if whatever you call the church is not the continuation, renewal of the physical, historic people of Israel, then, brothers and sisters, you are accusing Yahweh of polygamy and lack of faithfulness and adultery. And Yahweh is not the adulterer. It is the bride who has become adulterer. Are you with me? This is crucial stuff. Crucial to you to cut those tapes that your pastor back on the East Coast, back on the West Coast, has taught you that something called the you know what is the bride. It is not that is an anti Semitic, anti Hebraic, anti Yahweh yeah. theology designed to portray Yahweh as a schizophrenic who changes brides like you and me change socks. Wow. I'm telling you because I love you. Go ahead and get angry at me. That's fine. I can deal with it. Israel's renewed. Let's talk more about that. Go with me, please. To Devorim 33. Is anyone enjoying? Yeah. I said, is anyone enjoying? Yeah. Deuteronomy 33. That's what I thought you said. Devorim 